really, when you think of rejection, to me, it's misplaced identity. When you really don't know you're a son, you're a daughter, you're an heir in Christ. He loves you with an everlasting love. And that, that even though you were rejected at school, I mean, talk about, all right, you have your, your family life where you've experienced rejection growing up, but then you have school life where you're bullied or your teachers shamed you, made fun of you. And that happened to me a lot in school. And it really did a number on me. And I mean, I had to go through, I went to a Catholic school and I had to go through these certain nuns that I had to forgive because they were mean. And I became an atheist. I was an atheist. I would tell everybody, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. God doesn't exist. Well, because they were the representation of God to me. And they were mean as a snake. And so, not all of them. I did forgive them. But some of them, some of them were really mean. But, I mean, there were some that were nice, maybe two. But everybody else, they were mean. Mean, right? And so, I mean, they hit you. I mean, it was bad. So anyway, so many of us base our, even our identity on what our peers think. What our teachers think about us, Right? You know, we make ourselves vulnerable to that. What, what about the movies? What about the actors and actresses? You know, what about magazines? When girls are growing up, they're so impressionable, and you're looking at these models that are flawless. Well, they're airbrushed. Nobody's flawless, right? And so, you know, I mean, they're all working on doing something to get something to look flawless. And so, you know, I mean, but, but you, you, you compare yourself, and that's such a trap of the enemy. Again, if you don't love yourself, if you don't reject yourself, you will fall into that trap, okay? So that's how you get into um, your performance and all that. So let me ask you a question. Who or what defines you, right? Does the word define you? Who defines you? Does media define you? Is it your job, your parents, your workplace, money? Does that define you? How much, you know, how, what kind of a home you live in, does that define you? And it, is, is that, you know, what do you think of yourself? And so, and that's the other thing. It's like, Lord, I want to see myself through your eyes. Yeah. I don't want to see myself through what I think. I want to see myself through your eyes, Lord. And that's really important. Yeah. And so, um, you know, so even right now, if there's any kind of areas where you, you're harboring any kind of unforgiveness or maybe where you're not loving yourself or maybe where you've rejected yourself, just think about it right now. Write it down. Bring it before the Lord. And because God wants us to get to that place where we are so trusting him with our lives, period. And uh, that, you know, because God never wanted us to be apart. And when you're battling with rejection, I can promise you, you are withdrawn from the Lord. And there's a passive attitude with him. Because you don't believe that, well, why would he love me? I didn't believe my husband loved me. Why would I believe he loved me? You know? And so you can, you know, a lot of times, see, my father was a wonderful man but by the time i came around you know my sister linda had more uh opportunity with him nana but for me in my eyes the way i perceived it the way i saw it, my father worked three jobs now he's trying now he's a good man right he's trying to support our family and but uh, the way my perception of it was when it came time to me he was too busy you see now that what my father that wasn't his heart but that's the way I perceived it. But my father was working three jobs to support my family. And so that was the thing. But, but in my eyes, I didn't feel that. I, so when it, the Lord spoke to me, and he said to me one day, he said, well, part of your problem is you think I'm not interested in you. And because that's how I saw my father. See, and so a lot, that's why, again, the father's love message is really important. But I want to tell you, God is very interested in each and every one of us. And, and so, again, I had to repent. And there was a judgment I had against my dad. And my father never even did anything to me that made me think that, other than the fact that he wasn't around. And, and, you know, and when he was there, he would want to speak to me or speak into me. But it was very far and few between because he worked so many hours. So that affected me growing up. So, again, you know, God is a loving father. Sometimes if you've endured abuse, you think that he's abusive or not interested in you, or very distant. You know, you have to say, Lord, where, where am I with you? How do I see you? Because sometimes, not always, but sometimes we can project 
our earthly father unto God the Father. That can hinder our healing. All right? So, anyway, everybody doing okay? All right. All right. So, uh, let's see. I, I did mention that children are especially vulnerable to the damage of rejection because they're still developing their identity. That's why I said earlier but um, about some of the crazy things that they're allowing these kids to make decisions on. But we have to get our identity from the Word. So I wrote down some of the scriptures, and we're going to pray. And I'm going to open it up for questions, but we're going to pray, and we're going to take authority over a spirit of rejection and, and any kind of root system or a generational curse of rejection that could be operating in your life, okay? Or in people that you know that you want to minister to. So... Um, some of the scriptures are that, that really have ministered to me um, is that, first of all, God promises us uh, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So when you feel alone, when you're feeling that, that no one is there for you, he's always there for us. And so in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. Never, never. All right. So um, because of his great love, the Bible says we are adopted into his family. We're joint heirs with Christ in Ephesians one, five through seven. I love the way it's worded in the Amplified. It says he predestined and lovingly planned for us to be adopted to himself as his own children through Jesus Christ. None of us were accidents. All right. And it says here with uh, the kind, this kind of intention and good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace and favor, which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved, his son, Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption, that is our deliverance and salvation through his blood, which paid the penalty for our sin and resulted in the forgiveness and complete pardon of our sin in according with the riches of his grace. So he planned for us to be adopted. It wasn't like, oh, well, this poor guy over here doesn't have anybody, so let me welcome him into my family. No, he planned for you, Nate, to be in the family, right? Yeah. It's, um, Romans 3.22, we are the righteousness of Christ through faith, thus being made right before God. That's why, see, the enemy is always after our faith. Right. And it says we're entitled to a clean conscience before God because of the blood and have full assurance of faith when we go before him. The Bible says in Hebrews, we can come boldly before the throne room of grace. Why? Because we have access because of the blood. Amen. And so I, you know, I love this in Psalm 103, 12, our sins have been removed from us as far as the East is from the West. And God himself has chosen not to remember our failures. You have got to remember that because enemy is constantly bringing up our past and you need to tell the enemy to keep his mouth shut. And in Psalm 27, 10, it says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. When you don't feel you have anyone around, the Lord says, I will take you up and I will protect you. I will be there for you. I will love on you. I will encourage you. I have Holy Spirit there to, to comfort you. And, and so you're not going to settle, again, rejection issues fully until you get it down in your spirit. You are loved and accepted and, and, and appreciated by the Lord. Because that religious spirit, I'm going to tell you, wants you to look at yourself as this perfected, you know, individual that has to get everything right. You never had a, an issue in your family. Your kids are perfect. Everybody's perfect. Well, honey, if that's you, then come and pray over me. Because that's just not reality. And the enemy tries to make that picture a, a place of reality. And that's not the case. So there's a lot more I can say, but I want to give you, I want to give you opportunity to um, ask any questions if you have any, and then we're going to pray and take authority over. And I, and I typed it out just in the, in the example of a prayer when you're dealing with people with rejection. Listen, people, when, when they're battling with addictions, most often it's rooted in rejection. There's bondages that are there, but it's, it's, you have like a, a death wish on your life. You don't care about your life. Wow. Yeah. And so... There, there's some root issues that we're going to identify. We're going to, we're going to deal with this as, as we progress in the teachings here. But rejection is one of the key things that I found that we have got to deal with. 
because every single one of us have experienced something that even, you know, and here's the other thing that's so interesting about deliverance. You may have, let's say, experienced a rejection as a kid. Let's say you were bullied or made fun of, or, or maybe you lived in a violent neighborhood like I did where I was attacked a lot. And so where you had to fight and so uh, for survival. So it may not have affected you right away, the trauma of that, but maybe in your adult life it affects you. It surfaces at different times. It's not like, well, right away I would have known that. No, not necessarily. So, and that's the thing. So sometimes it's like that. And that's why your prayer time with the Lord is so valuable and so important because that's Holy Spirit to show you your root issues, show you the whys behind it. 